Hi, my name is Tony Lopez with Alternative Living Spaces. And if you're interested in building a container home and you're in a really hot climate, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. We've been building container homes in Las Vegas, Nevada for the last seven years, so have definitely been in a position to test how do containers perform in extreme heat. We've had days here in Vegas where it's exceeded over 120 degrees, and so we've truly been able to test these containers to determine what kind of setup do you need on your interior, how do you need to properly build out your container, so that even if you're in a really hot climate, you can still enjoy your home. Now, by nature, this question comes up a lot because containers are a metal box. You know, as we know, metal is a conductor of heat. And so if you just have the sun hitting that metal container, you could even just go up and touch an exterior of a container in direct sunlight. And the truth is, it's hot. So how do you make sure that even though this container can naturally get very hot and on the interior naturally does not have a lot of airflow, how do you make it a livable, enjoyable, and cool space? The first thing that you need to consider is the insulation. Now you're gonna want your container to be very well insulated if you're in a hot climate. Now there's a few different types of insulation that you can choose from. Uh, most commonly, we see people use spray foam insulation for shipping containers. Uh, it works very well. It has an R value of R7 per inch. And if you're framing out with two by fours, that means you can achieve about an R28 R value in your sidewalls. Now, when you're insulating your container, you also want to consider insulating the underside of the container, as well as adding additional insulation into the rooftop or ceiling. Uh, one way that you can achieve this is actually by dropping your ceiling. Instead of having it flush to the top of the container on the interior, you can drop it an additional six to eight inches. That's going to allow you to not only include some spray foam, but some additional bat foam on top of that. Now, there is a miracle product that is designed specifically to combat heat, and this does apply to shipping containers. It's a ceramic insulated paint that is basically a heat barrier. It's not going to allow the heat to transfer from the outside to the inside. This can be applied to the interior of your container home, and it will actually prevent the heat from transferring inside. The company that we use that produces this, the parent company is called Harcoat Coatings, and we work with a company here in Vegas called Neptune Coatings that we purchase this material from. It does take a specialty paint sprayer to apply it, so you do wanna make sure you have the right gear if you're looking to use that product. Not only does that product prevent the heat from transferring to the inside of the container, it also has additional insulation value to add to your container home of about R10. Now, of course, there are other insulation products to consider as well, such as InsoFast insulation, which is foam panels. You can also use EPS foam board, bat foam insulation, wool. There's a variety of products. Now, if you're in a really dry climate, you have the ability to choose from a wide variety of insulation options. However, if you're in a climate that there is a lot of moisture or you get really cold winters, you need to consider the moisture challenges with containers. We have other videos that'll deep dive on that topic specifically, uh, but if you are in one of those areas with high moisture, high humidity, or that gets really cold, the best option for your insulation at the end of the day is gonna be closed cell spray foam. Now, when it comes to insulating the underside of your container, we do like to use closed cell spray foam for that regardless. That can be sprayed on underneath the container up to a six inch depth, which we have done before, but most commonly we'll do about two inches of closed cell spray foam. That's gonna give you about R14 insulation rating for your flooring. Now for your exterior paint, it also is gonna be able to help you maintain a better temperature inside. So of course, if you're in a hot climate, you're not gonna wanna paint your container a very dark color. You're gonna wanna consider both the color of your paint and the sheen of your paint to maximize the efficiency of your unit. This means you're gonna wanna go with a lighter colored paint and a paint that's gonna be better at reflecting. So going with something like a semi-gloss could be a great choice, especially if you have a one-trip container and you're not concerned about a bunch of dents being highlighted with a glossier paint color. One of the most important things to consider in a hot climate is the HVAC unit you're gonna be using inside your space. Now, if you're doing a 20-foot container, one unit in and of itself should be sufficient. If you're doing a 40-foot unit, we typically recommend having uh, airflow in your main living space as well as in the bedroom space. So our favorite types of HVAC units to use are typically mini split HVACs. 
you can buy a unit that has a condenser with dual fans. That way you can have a fan both in that main living room area as well as in the bedroom. Now there are other HVAC options as well. Uh, for example, we've done window units, portable units, as well as wall mount units. Um, but I would say best bang for your buck and best quality of product is gonna be a mini split. When it comes to brands of mini split, there is a wide variety to choose from. You can get a Mitsubishi, which is gonna be a great quality at possibly a little bit of a higher price point. What we've been using is a product called Senville. So Senville mini splits, you can find them right on Amazon. And for about $800, you can get a great product. One last thing that you can do to help maintain a good temperature in your container home. I would say that this isn't a must. If you have good insulation and good HVAC, you're fine. Uh, but you can add additional canvas shading around your container or over your container to prevent that direct sunlight from hitting that container. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made a lot of sense for those of you that are in a hot climate on ways to navigate to make sure that you build your container home properly. If you'd like more information on any of our container home products, you can check us out at our website, which is alternativelivingspaces.com. Um, if you're looking to build your own container home, I've put together a free workshop. I've got that linked below in the description. Tons of incredible knowledge in there that's going to really help to save you thousands of dollars on your build. So I'd encourage you to check that out, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.